27, 6, 12. The question they ask you, how are decisions about relevant activities made? The question they're asking you, is voting rights relevant? <laughs> if voting rights are relevant, you look at voting rights. If voting rights are not relevant, then you focus on other rights. Now, what would typically, the special purpose vehicles would still be on that side. Because in a special purpose vehicle, the bank or the lawyer holds 100% of the shares. So voting rights are not relevant in your, in your good old special purpose vehicles. So special purpose vehicles will fall there. I doubt many special purpose vehicles will fall there. But what may happen is you may get some things that we thought were having voting rights falling there. Also another big problem that's going to happen here in IFRS 10 is people who were sitting with 46% and thought, well, great, we're not controlling, are going to have to start consolidating if in reality they control. They thought, well, wait a minute, the standard says 50% is a presumption of control. Let's have 49.4%. Or let's have 42%. They say, no, 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 we don't really care about how much percentage you're holding. We think you still control. And there's a concept called de facto control. De facto control used to be a concept that we used to think about. We didn't have any strong views on it. The standards now say, wait a minute, at 45% there is possibility that you control. Let me give you three scenarios. I've got these three scenarios here. But let me, let's, let's look at it and let's think about it. Can you control at less than 50%? I'm clearly telling you the answer is yes. But we need to make sure that we control. What IFRS 10 requires you to do, which IS 27 didn't, is consider your rights and other people's rights. Now what we did in the good old IS 27, I control, I don't have to care what other people do. Or I don't control, I don't care whether the other people do what they do. IFRS 10 forces me to look at my rights and their rights. What it says, let's look at example one. This company holds 48% of the shares. The remaining 52% are held by thousands and thousands of voters or thousands and thousands of shareholders and these guys can't come together to make a decision against you. You're saying, listen, at that 48% holding, you have control. You consolidate, even though you're less than 50%. Then scenario two, look at this one. Investor holds 45%. There are two other investors that hold 26% each. So what's that? 52. So that makes it 97. Thousands of people hold the 3%. In this case, I'm going to say, hey, wait a minute. I hold 45%. I've got, I possibly have control, but let me see what the other guys have. Oh, the other guys have 52%. If they get together, I can't make a decision in my favor. Therefore, that one is not control. Then there's another one, another situation. I hold 35% of the shares, three other investors each hold 8% of the voting rights. So what's it? 888 is 24. The remaining 41% is widely dispersed. No other arrangements affect decision making. Now here is where I start scratching my head. I say, okay, do I actually control this company? If we need to have a special resolution, we need 75% of the voting rights. Ah, I got 35, but let's say these people don't even come to meetings. Or, can these guys block a decision? Or can the company not have a decision with me? That's why I'm uncertain here. If I have 35 out of 75, I'm sitting in a strong position, but it's still not conclusive, so I have to look at other facts and circumstances. What IFRS 10 also does, it, doesn't, it goes and defines what returns are. IS-27 didn't tell you what returns. It says, the power to govern the financial op and operating activities so as to obtain benefits. He didn't say what the benefits were. <laughs> this one says benefits. Benefits can be dividends. That's the common one. It could be any other benefit, like fees. <laughs> the asset manager is earning fees. Even though he's holding 30%, he's in it because he wants the fees. He's getting lots of fees from that. He's getting liquidity support. All those kind of things. And then the last question that IFRS 10 asks you is, hey, listen, are you an agent? Once you've got power and you've got exposure to variability in returns, are you a principal or an agent? So even if you are that bank, you could be a principal or an agent. If you are a principal, 
you consolidate. If you're not the principal, you don't consolidate. Simple as that. Or is it simple? Let me go to the economic consequences. I'm sorry about this. I'm skipping slides. They're not relevant, but I will de deal with them or give, make the slides available to you. What are the potential impacts? What does IFRS 10 mean for you? You know what? A lot more SPVs are going to be consolidated. A lot more companies between the 40% to 50% mark are going to be consolidated. You are now going to have to look at substantive voting rights differently. Investment managers, private equity funds, they're going to be consolidating a lot more. Looking at silos may change your decision on consolidation. There may be things that you were consolidating, you may not consolidate, because if you look at the silo thing. All right, exposure to returns versus majority of benefits is a different analysis. You could also stop consolidating some of the things you thought you were consolidating. All right, okay, I've got 15 minutes. In that 15 minutes, I'm going to deal with IFRS 11, 12, and 13, and I will finish it, yeah. All right. Understood 10. I know there's no questions because generally people get spinning with this. They want to throw something at you, but don't. I'm the messenger. All right. IFRS 11. Where does IFRS 11 fit? IFRS 11 deals with joint operations, deals with the accounting for joint operations and joint ventures. What was historically jointly controlled assets and jointly controlled operations fits squarely into joint operations. But things are different. Let's compare IS 31 to the new IFRS 11. IFRS 11, if there wasn't, old IS 31, if there wasn't a separate vehicle, it was either a jointly controlled operation or jointly controlled asset. How did we do? We just brought into account our assets and liabilities. If there was a separate vehicle, we did either proportionate consolidation or equity accounting. Remember? Good old days. This is what we currently do. The new standard says, wait a minute, no separate vehicle is still going to be a jointly controlled operation. If it is a separate vehicle, but separation is overcome by form, contract or other facts and circumstances, it's still a joint operation. Now what this is trying to do, if you are, have joint control over a partnership, what's the use? You understand it. You have joint control over a partnership. The legal form is that the liabilities are yours. The assets are yours. In that case, you know what, even though there's a separate legal entity, it's still going to be a joint operation. We're not going to give you joint venture accounting. The only time we're going to give you joint venture accounting, it's a separate vehicle which has separate life, which can do its own business with third parties. If you create the separate vehicle only to give you supplies, no, 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 wait a minute. That's yours. That will go into joint operation. All right. And also what they're saying, let me go to, yeah, is what the, if you are what was traditionally called a joint venture, you can't proportionately consolidate. That's what IFRS 11 is saying. That proportionate consolidation as a method is gone. Now I just want to get here. If I have to compare IS-31 to IFRS-11, under IS-31, I had this concept called jointly controlled asset, jointly controlled operations, or jointly controlled entities. What was jointly controlled assets and jointly controlled operations are likely to be joint operations there. However, some of the jointly controlled entities under IS-31 will be joint operations, and most of them will remain joint ventures. to get to another slide sorry okay what does that mean under the previous standard I might have used proportionate consolidation or equity method if it was if it meets the definition of a joint venture I can only use the equity method if it's a jointly controlled oper jointly con joint operation I will have the proportionate accounting that existed before happy does that make sense the takeaway the message you need to get from here is that you need to reassess joint arrangements again. And what you're going to have to look at is if you are changing from the proportionate consolidation, proportionate consolidation is gone, you're going to equity method that's going to impact your financial statements. But the big thing, I think, is just look at your joint ventures again. Some of them, the nature of it may not be actually a joint venture. 
it may be just a, not a joint vein, it's 